Will Ryan, CEO of Granite Shares, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Good well, to be back. Yeah, happy to have you back. And I'm going to dive right into it here because global gold ETFs were negative last month, February. This is the first time we're seeing this since last September. So is this telling us, Will, that investors are losing interest in gold? Um, it's not. I think that what typically happens and what we saw last month was just some redemptions on the back of options selling in the market. So it's a much more tactical uh, trade than strategic. I think if you look at the, the longer term picture since the beginning of 2016, you know, the trend right. is, has been very much in favor of um, investors getting back into the gold market and back in the ETF market. I think the, one of the main catalysts for that, at least in the last sort of couple of months, has been the Fed's decision to delay interest rate rises and sort of effectively engineering an overshoot, uh, potential overshoot um, on the inflation side. So you feel the appetite for gold right now, is, is it alive? Is it healthy? It, it, it is. Uh, if you look at the activity in the ETFs, not just our ETF, BAR, but in other ETFs, um, there's certainly buying. And I think if you look at those assets, um, you know, people are looking. I mean, remember, last year was the first year that people lost money in a 60-40 portfolio. Mm -hmm. So investors are looking to change that asset allocation mix, are looking to put in other assets like gold. And so right now, people are thinking about if we've got lower equity returns going forward, if that environment's going to change is not as positive, how do we put some, some ballast in the portfolio? So, Will, you mentioned the Fed taking a more dovish stance. Is that really what it boils down to when we're talking gold price? You know, what about the dollar aspect? Well, the dollar is a function of that. So the dollar is very important, but it relates to the Fed because specifically when it comes to the more dovish stance, if we're, you know, the market or Fed funds, futures are pricing in no uh, rate hikes for this year. But what we've seen is a reduction in real rates, and real rates have a good correlation with gold. So real rates coming down, gold prices going up. And I think from that perspective, you know, real rates coming down creates a weaker dollar, and a weaker dollar platform obviously is good for gold. So, so when I spoke to you last, I think it was the start of the year, you, yeah. you came in here confident, you said gold is back. You still feel like that as uh, we're just starting the month of March, yeah. officially? Yes, um, very, very much so. I think you know the big change, like I said, was we started yeah. to get this, um, these noises in December. Yeah. The, the rate hike uh, calendar for this year wasn't going to be the same. And then we obviously had the meeting in January where it was confirmed um, that the Fed was going to put the policy on, on hold. And, and I think more than that, that actually kind of change policy towards interest rates and try and engineer and overshoot inflation rather than tightening <laughs> Uh, into into weakness in the global economy. So that that makes a big difference in my mind. And so whether that creates an environment for, for an uplift in gold prices right now or a little bit later, I think the environment is favorable. Uh, Will, finally, I you know I came back from three mining shows back to back, and obviously all the buzz was, was the merger and acquisition activity we've been seeing. Um, when we hear big news like the new Mont Barrick uh, merger talk that we had heard at the start of the month, does that affect you as an ETF fund manager? It, it doesn't directly, um, but indirectly it does because you know, people have two different ways to invest in gold, that you can either buy a gold ETF or you can buy shares in a gold mining company. And those are kind of two very different choices. I think the, the merger activity just signals something that has been going on in the market you know, for a long time, which is that there are no major discoveries out there. And therefore, what these major companies are doing, kind of buying each other's capacity um, in order to improve efficiencies. And so for me, it's all about so, gold so, price. So you, are you, you would say we've reached peak gold? When you say we haven't seen major discoveries, do you, do you feel that uh, we've depleted the reserves that are out there and we're now at peak I, gold? I, I'm not sure whether, whether we can say that we've depleted the reserves. I'm just saying that you know, if you look at the last 30 years, there's not really been any kind of major new discoveries. and companies are kind of electing to buy each other's capacity as opposed to investing and therefore prospecting mm -hmm. and finding these major new new, new finds. Right. And I think, you know, if you look at the gold price, you know, the gold price um, has done well and these companies have struggled, you know, as a broad sector to keep up with the gold price. And I think that's something that's important for an ETF. So there's time. more of a focus on, on just acquiring as opposed to let's go out there and explore and find these yeah, because they've struggled to, to outperform the price of gold. Yeah. And so from an investor perspective, if you're making the decision, I want gold in my portfolio, the only reason or one of the major reasons you're going to buy uh, a company or the mining sector is because you think that 
they have the ability to outperform the price of gold. But if they can't do that, then why take that extra yeah, risk? Absolutely. So people are just investing in gold. Well said. Well, Ryan, thank you so much thank for stopping you. by. And we'll see you soon. Great. Thank you.